And panel, please come up. Thank you, Linda. Four years ago, Joy Anderson and I started raising money for Good Capital's investment fund. And we were sitting in a hotel room at 51st and Lex, looking at the list of prospects for limited partners. We looked at 25 names and we realized that we had two women on the list. And at that moment, she and I looked at each other and we decided that if we were going to be part of building the field of investing for good, we were going to invite women and their experience and their knowledge and their assets to the tables of power. I'm happy to say that the result of that is that over 30% of the fund that we raised there was from women, including Barbara Dawkins. Thank you very much, Barbara. Um, but also what that birthed was something we call Women Effect Investments. We launched Women Effect Investments to do two things. To create a community of individuals and of organizations who would demand a gender lens for investments. And two, to create a robust landscape of investment opportunities from which they could select. There's many people in this room who have helped us along the journey, many people sitting here, so you can tell why I am actually thrilled to introduce this panel of um, market builders and movement builders. To my far right, the woman who needs almost no introduction at this point, um, blogging at Purse Pundit. So, no more, no more. No more. Um, <laughs> Jackie Zenner. There's few people who haven't been here. So, right, okay. um, one of the youngest uh, partners at Goldman Sachs, co-chair of Women Moving Millions, founder of Circle Financial, um, and board member of WFN. Got it all. Suzanne Beagle, uh, experienced e-learning entrepreneur, philanthropist, now running uh, CEO of Investor Circle, an amazing network of investors who are leveraging their capital to create social impact. Joe Keefe, CEO of Pax World Investments, one of the leading innovators in asset managers and sustainable investing, a tireless advocate for um, a gender lens, and board chair of Women Thrive. Stephanie Hanbury Brown, who after a successful global career at uh, JP Morgan launched Golden Seeds, a network of angels who invest in women-led and women-managed companies. And finally, Donna Sims Wilson, Executive Vice President of Castle Oak Securities, a leading boutique investment bank. Throughout her career, Donna has been a tireless advocate of real regulatory reform, but also a, an advocate for minority and women-owned firms. We're going to have a good time today. So to tee up our conversation, I'm going to offer three things, um, a spectrum, a field, and a framework. So stay with me. First, a quick spectrum. You're going to hear today about a number of things that range in, in order in terms of what you can do to start investing with a gender lens all the way from how you buy products, whether that's clothes or how you select your investment advisor, to issues of how you can do shareholder activism, all the way over to ways that you can start to move your portfolio to investments with a gender lens. It's an entire spectrum. Secondly, a field. Many of you are aware of socially responsible investing that emerged in the 1980s. Many of you have been involved in it. A lot has happened since then. There is a field called impact investing, which is investing for financial and social return. This field is diverse. It crosses asset classes and it crosses social areas. There are people working in impact investing around poverty, water, agriculture, you name it, down the line. 
it's also legitimate. JP Morgan just issued a report calling investment, uh, impact investing a new asset class and said they anticipate growth from 50 billion up to over 600 billion in the next decade. Finally, this field is actually innovating in really interesting ways. So as we speak right now, there's a contest going over in, in Manhattan at JP Morgan's office in terms of new vehicles in impact investing. And I'm proud to say that Criterion is actually sponsoring next year's contest to have a gender lens. So hopefully we'll have some new vehicles going on. Um, in, uh, and then finally, a framework. I get asked a lot when I talk about this um, about what do you mean by a gender lens? What does that look like? So we talk about it in three circles, a big Venn diagram, and you'll hear about all of them from the panelists today. So the first is um, access to capital. We heard about that yesterday in terms of what Axion's doing it. Uh, many of you internationally have worked in small and emerging businesses, getting women access to capital. Secondly, workplace equity. Whether that is about getting women into positions of management, women on boards, or again, to use the Axion example, how is it that our training around domestic violence is supporting women? And then finally, products and services that support and enhance the lives of women and girls. Whether that is healthcare, maternal healthcare, whether it's maternity clothes, whether it's access to clean water, and many, many others. So access to capital, workplace equity, products and services, the sweet spot can be in the middle. With the, that, that introduction, the spectrum, the field, the framework, Jackie, you know this community intimately. Where do you see the resonance for this topic for women's funds today? Well, thank you for that question. I'm a bit embarrassed to be up here again, but this is the one I really wanted to be on. <laughs> I was the driver of this one. In hindsight, I'm, I'm actually embarrassed personally. We had another co-chair, a vice chair, present today um, during the conference. Perhaps we didn't at the time we planned this, Gail Sylvia Pullen, in our Women Moving Million session. She really should have been the one here, and I'm, I, w I wish that we could have, like, roll back the clock and make that happen. But I'm really excited about this topic, and it came up a couple years ago in our conference. Um, when thinking about the power of our money, we're here as, as uh, change agents, as investors. We're all investors in women's advancement in this room, every single one of us. And this conversation, to me, had felt, um, and I think to others, that we were focusing on just half our, in some ways, half our balance sheet. We were looking at it through the context of philanthropic investment. And when you think about those dollars as compared to investment dollars or cons how you make decisions about what you buy and spend, um, I think there was something like, and I don't have global numbers, but $300 billion going to philanthropy of which 6 or 7% go to women and girls. That's what, 18 million, something like that. Compared to women make 80% of the consumer product decisions, control 50% of the world's wealth. I mean, we're talking trillions and trillions of dollars that could be leveraged to advance social change, advanced women and girls that we're not even talking about. In fact, I don't think there's been a conference on the topic. Can you imagine it? How many conferences have, have there been about talking about women's philanthropy, um, but not about this other half? So it was a, a couple years ago, and actually one of the reasons I really wanted to join this board is saying there's no more powerful community of women and men advancing women and girls in the Women's Funding Network. Um, no more potential for power, perhaps, and potential for economic power. And it's sort of that conversation that we really wanted to bring um, to, to this place in this space today to start to begin the dialogue of thinking about what we can do to fully uh, use all our resources um, to drive the change that we want to see in the world. So, you know, we'll have a conversation about how might that happen, but I'll sort of, I love this sort of frame of reference thing. You can think about it at the individual level. So what am I doing? What products am I buying? Who are my investment advisors? Do I own mutual fund products? There's no women on the boards of directors. Do I go shopping in anthropology, which I think you just pointed out, Jackie, has no women on their boards. Maybe we shouldn't shop at anthropology anymore. You know, so it takes some work, right? So not to pick them out. There are hundreds of companies we buy products from that have no women 
you know, in, in leadership positions. And, you know, how, so we could think about it at the individual level. What am I doing? What am I buying? What investment manager? What products? And then a full spectrum, which I'm really trying to institute personally at our foundation level. How does my investment portfolio reflect my values? So I'm an investor in Golden Seeds. I'm an investor in a number of, um, a number of funds that are run by women and invest in women. You know, I'm an investor in Joe's funds. Um, I'm, all, I'm thinking about I'm doing the shareholders. You can think about that at the personal level. Then you think about it at an organizational level, whether you be a, run a women's fund or wherever you are, you serve on the board. How does that apply to what my company's doing, what my board of directors, what are the conversations we're holding about the other side of our balance sheets and how do we facilitate that and you're going to hear an example, how do we begin to, to mobilize as a community of people that share that value set? And then we can begin to think about it even at the broader context. As a network of funds and as part of a global women's movement, what are we doing to organize and, and provoke each other and be thoughtful about how we're using our money? So my big message is we were a powerful, if you, if you add up the assets of everyone in this room or the assets of everyone in the room that you know of that care about women and girls and you're, you begin to challenge ourselves to think about what we can do with those assets, not just our giving dollars, huge opportunity. Great. Um, and, and exciting. Let's go to another community. Um, Suzanne, tell us a little bit about Investor Circle and also where you see a gender lens playing or, or not playing there. Okay. Thank you. Investor Circle was started about 19 years ago um, by a woman named Susan Davis um, with a small group of people, men and women, who felt that if we wanted to see the next generation of the body shop and Ben and & Jerry's and great brands, Eileen Fisher, um, so we better be stepping in to be the ones to invest in them because they weren't just going to happen by accident. Um, so we are a network of angel investors. Those are people who are individual investors who have enough capacity to do direct early stage venture investing. We're philanthropists and family offices, and we are institutional players, early stage venture funds and larger foundations. And we come together to invest in for-profit businesses with positive social and environmental uh, impact. That's our lens. So they have to be financially viable, financially successful uh, potential but they also really have to pass a screen of what is the social impact that they're going to make and the environmental impact um, that they're going to make in the world. So we have invested in uh, the last 19 years in about um, 230 companies. We've put about $150 million into companies, and our capital is a catalyst, has been a catalyst, for over $2 billion in follow-on capital. So many of us who have funds um, on the philanthropy side think about not only the grant that we're making, but what is the, how much else did it leverage? And we also think about what is our role as catalytic, catalytic investors in these companies. Now we've had a lens that is very much about the social and environmental impact, but I would say not so much of a lens around the um, women-led, women-owned, or women-focused businesses. Um, and at times, there was a point, maybe about 10, 15 years ago in IC's history where there was some intention around let's go out and find women and minority owned businesses to invest in. And I think that sort of fell away as people got more excited about sustainability, around health, around education, and said let's really be focused on what it is these businesses are doing um, that is making the world a better place. So I came in as CEO, I've been an active member for eight years. I came in as CEO in July and I said, well, this is all well and good, but I'd really like to understand the state of where we are in terms of investing in women. And when I think about investing in women, I share uh, the perspective that that could be investing in a company that was founded by a woman, that's got women on the management team or is run by a woman, or could be a company that's really positively affecting the lives of women and girls. So I look at all of those things. Um, and so it could be that a woman-run company is in the biofuels business or the recycling business, or they might be um, creating a healthcare company. Um, but really specifically the ones that positively affect women and girls, that could be about job creation, that could be about social equity, it could be about the products that they're making. Um, so there's, uh, there are a variety of other lenses that we can use. Um, and I have to say that I asked my staff to go and really dig in and say what have we invested in, and it was um, depressing for me. Um, we have, out of those 230, 40 companies, only invested in about 30 companies that are 
um, that really meet that lens. So about 13%. Out of the $150 million that we put to work, I would say it's less than 10 million that has gone into women-owned, women-led, or women-focused companies. And so the first thing, and I've heard this throughout the last, three, the last couple of days, is if you want to know where you want to go, you're going to know where you're starting. And so the, good, the bad news is, I think we're starting at a pretty low bar, the good news is there's no place to go but up. <laughs> and I can make a huge impact, and we can make a huge impact here. So very clearly, we invest across about 10 categories of businesses, from health, education, energy environment, sustainable consumer products, community economic development. It's about 80% domestic and about 20% global investing that we do. Um, and I think that there is a tremendous need and opportunity to add in, in addition to how much water are we saving, how much carbon are we saving, how much uh, waste are we saving, how much job creation are we doing, to really add a gender lens. Um, and there are people within the network that absolutely would disagree with that, and there are people in the network who are saying, go, 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 I'm in. I want to be part of this initiative. So let me talk about the investor side for a minute. Um, and I know I, I'm just about out of time, but the investor side, we are, Golden Seeds is 100%, almost 100% women. We're about 30% of the women in the network are, um, of the people in the network are women. We have a tremendous opportunity to increase that as well. And when I get a chance to speak again, I'll talk about the link between philanthropy and angel investing. <laughs>